In the last lecture, we created a basic hard-coded custom form validator. And in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to make that same validator configurable. And by the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to create advanced configurable custom validators for both model-driven and template-driven forms. In the previous lecture, we created a custom email validator, which checked that emails ended in a certain domain, a domain which we hard coded in the validator itself. What if we wanted to make the domain name configurable so that the validator can work for other domains? We solve this by turning our validator function into a factory function. The factory function returns a validator function configured as we want. So in this plunker in front of you right now, I have again a basic model driven form, exactly the same model driven form as we used in the previous lecture. So at the bottom in the component itself in the model, model form component, we create the form controls and in the form controls, especially the email one, we add the validators in a second parameter to the form control constructor. So in this script, I'm going to add, actually, let me close this out here on the left. And actually, let's just stop it running for now. So here I'm going to create a factory function which returns an email domain validator function. So I'm going to call this factory function email domain validator factory. Now this is actually going to return a function. Now if we go back into the previous code, I'm just going to copy and paste the validator function that we created in the previous lecture here. Essentially what we want to do is we want this function here to return something that looks like this function but with just the codecraft.tv, the domain, we want that to be passed, to be used the required domain that we're passing into the validator factory function. So we can do that very easily by just copying and pasting our old code. Inside here, we want to return a function. We don't need to give it a name. In fact, it actually can have a name, but we don't need to give it a name. So we're gonna return an anonymous function and where we used codecraft.tv, I'm just going to use required domain, which is passed into the email domain validator factory function. Then in our form control, we can just use the email domain validator factory function to return as a validator function. So let me show you. So I'm going to add it here to the list of validators for our, our email form control. So email domain validator factory, and we're going to call it and passing codecraft.tv. And this function is actually going to return us a function. Okay, so it's a, we're calling this function and it's going to return us a function. Now this works the same way as the pattern validator above works. You pass it a parameter and it returns you a pattern validator working specifically for this pattern. That's kind of exactly what we're doing here, but we're passing in the codecraft.tv domain as a parameter. But looking at how the validators are the built in validators work, they're actually static methods on a validators class. And we can actually do the same. And it's useful to do the same to, to keep all of our validators kind of contained together in one class. So that's what I'm going to do above. So instead of an email domain validator factory function, I'm going to have a class called CodeCraft validators. And it's going to have one function, a static function. A static function means that you don't need an instance to call it. You can actually just call it by CodeCraft validators dot and then the name of the function. And I actually want to call it email domain. So now, again, we go back to our validators at the bottom. And instead of email domain validator factory, we do codecraft validators dot email domain. 
And now we have something that looks very, very much like the built-in validators that we have in Angular. And if we run this, everything works as we expect. Now I've kept the same validation error messages in our template as before. So now it says email must be on the codecraft.tv domain. Now, a big question would be, what if we configured this to something else? What if we figured this to google.com? And now we rerun the application. And I type asim. Now, if you look at the error message, our error message still has codecraft.tv hard coded into it. So it's still kind of hard coding something. We've now configured this so it should match only google.com domains. And in fact, if I type google.com, everything should be fine. So our error message is now wrong. How can we make this error message show google.com? Now to do that, we can actually just return just some more information, some more useful information from the error object returned from the validator. So if I scroll back up to the validators, you can see here in the error object right now, we're just returning the parsed domain. We can actually also return the required domain, the required domain that we have configured this validator with. And then if we go down to the error message, so here, the email domain error message, we can bind in the error message itself the required domain, which is now being passed in the errors object. So now we can just do email errors, email domain required domain. So now if we rerun the application, and now it's type asim ads, and now we're rendering google.com as we should. So that's how we can create a configurable model driven validator. The next topic of this lecture is how to create a configurable template driven validator. Now to do a create a configurable template driven validator, we need to have a couple of other steps. Well, there's a couple of methods. The first method I'm going to show you is where we provide the required domain to the DI framework. And then we inject that required domain into our directives constructor. And then we use the same factory function that we use in the model driven validator to create a configured validator function. And then we provide this configured validator function to the directives providers. Now we're also going to take advantage of another fact of validator. So far, I've only shown you a validator which acts as a function, but a validator can also be a class, a class with a member function called validate. So we can actually turn our directive class into a validator class. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to provide the configurable domain name in our ng module. So let me scroll down to our ng module at the bottom. Now this plunker is a plunker that uses a template driven form. And the first thing we need to do is to provide the configurable domain name in our ng module. So I'm going to copy and paste it in our ng module like this. So I'm providing a token, which is the string required domain. And I'm going to set the value to be google.com. And then I'm going to copy across the model driven configurable validator. I'm going to copy that across to our template driven sample code here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here. And also I'm just going to bring across the directive validator we created in the previous lecture, the hard coded one. Now, as I said, a validator as well as being a function can also be a class with a validate function. So let's turn our email domain validator directive into a class with a validate function. And when this validate function is called, I want to execute another function, another internal function 
that I'm going to call val function. I'm going to pass it the control. What is val function? Well, I'm going to make a private variable. And it's of type validator function. And all the validator function is, is a type, which is a function which takes as a parameter a control. And then I'm going to add a constructor. And I'm going to inject into the constructor the required domain, the one we provided in our ng module configuration. Now, because we're providing, because the token is a string, we have to use the inject decorator in order to let the Angular dependency injection framework know what token to resolve this argument with. And then I'm going to use the factory function that we created for the model driven approach, this one here. I'm going to use that to, to store an actual reference to a configured validator function. So here, I'm going to do this val function is equal to and I'm going to call the codecraft validators email domain factory function and passing in the configured required domain. So now the val function is going to be an actual validator function. And again, since a validator can either be a function or a class, I turn the email domain validator directive into a validator class because as a validate function and all i'm doing is as i'm forwarding any call to the validate function to our configured val function so we're almost there but we need to change something so if we look at the providers this is the code from the previous lecture and in the previous lecture we used a value which was the email domain validator function okay now we're not providing the email domain validator function anymore. In fact, what are we providing? We're providing a class, okay, as a validator. And which class are we providing? Well, we're providing this class. So we're gonna provide the email domain validator, which is our directive class itself. And just like before, we need to make sure that our template code is going to render the non hard coded domain as well. So we need to render out here email errors, email domain, and then required domain, just like before. And again, just like before, we need to make sure we add the validator to our input control. So we add it by using the email domain attribute to the input control here. And one final thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we are providing our, or we're declaring our email domain validator on our ng module. So let me just go ahead and add that into our declarations. And then hopefully this is now working. And here we go. Just as we expect and just the same as the model driven form. So now if we want to change which domain we are supporting, we simply change the configuration in our provider. And everything is now configured to use facebook.com. Okay, so that's one way we can configure our template driven validators by providing values on our ng module. But really, we want to make our validator configurable via template property binding. So if I go back into our template, scroll up, and if you see how the way pattern, the pattern validator works, that's kind of how I want my email domain validator to work. So if I bind into it, and I want to be able to pass the domain which I want to configure with. So let's say let's configure with facebook.com. Okay, so this is, this is how I want to make, or this is another way in which I want to be able to make my template driven validators configurable. Now that's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is update our email domain validator class so it can take the required domain as an input. 
So if I scroll up, I'm going to have an input. And we want to name our input decorator, we want the external name to be the same as our selector. So we give it email domain. And we just make the property name email domain as well. And then we need to know when the email domain property has the actual email domain assigned to it. This isn't going to happen in the constructor. So if you remember the section on the component lifecycle phases, you will remember that the email domain isn't actually set by the time the constructor is executed. So by the time this function body is executed, the email domain is actually going to be blank. Now the right place to check to see if the email domain has been set is in the ng on changes lifecycle hook. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do ng on changes. This returns void, doesn't return anything. And in here we can check that if, if the email domain has been set, then we want to set the validator function to the one returned from the code graph validators else we set the validator function to something called the null validator. And all, all that the null validator does is just always returns null. And if you remember returning null from a validator just means success. This always returns success. So if there's no email domain configured, the validator will pass all the time. And then we can actually just completely remove this constructor. And we don't even need to inject the required domain as well because we're, we're configuring it via the template bindings. And there's one more change that we need to make. So right now we're providing this validator as a class. But we need to provide this as an alias so we get exactly the same instance provided to the validators. So we just need to change that to use existing email domain validator. So now if I rerun my application, as, oh, something's gone wrong. And before I run this, there's just one more change I need to make. I made a bit of a mistake here. So I'm passing the email domain thing. This is some JavaScript that actually gets executed. Now, facebook.com is not valid JavaScript. We need to pass it a string. So how do we pass a string? We wrap it with quotes. So that's what I forgot to do. So we need to actually pass in a string of facebook.com and not just the text facebook.com. So now if I rerun the application. So apologies, another error. I'm not passing in required domain. Um, I'm passing in this.email domain. So hopefully now everything should work. And here we go. So now type asim at facebook.com, everything works, codecraft.tv, and we get the error message. So there we go, we've now just rewritten the template-driven validator directive to one where we provided the email domain through the template versus providing it through the ng module providers. So in summary, for model-driven forms, we use a factory function which returns a validator function configured as we want. But for template driven forms, we create a validator class, often reusing the same factory function as was used in model driven forms.